Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I'm Annie Thyme with American Printing, Chair of this year's Women United Council. And together with our Vice Chair, Jer Jill Whiffley of American Family Insurance, we welcome you to the 2020 Women United Breakfast. We know many of you have faithfully attended our breakfast over the last 10 years. And while we wish we could celebrate in person, we are so grateful that you have joined us virtually to continue the tradition of celebrating women and education in our community. Some of you have received the printed program in the mail. This year, we also have a virtual program that you can access through the chat feature of the Zoom event today. I hope you take advantage of the chat feature during our program today. Um, as things come up that you uh, want to applaud, go ahead, give us some positive feedback, and also go ahead and um, uh, reference that program throughout the morning. It is such an honor to be here this morning, celebrating the amazing work United Way and its partners are doing in education. And we are here to recognize our 2020 Women United Philanthropy Award recipient, Fabiola Hamden. Some of us are gathered here, socially distanced, in the Celebrations Entertainment Studios. And we are grateful for more than 300 of you that have joined us virtually today. So this is our largest breakfast to date. So thank you. We also want to say thank you to BMO Harris Bank for their support as our presenting sponsor. Let's hear from our very own Monique Share on what they are doing in the community. Good morning, everyone. My name is Monique Shear, and I'm so happy to be here with you this morning, albeit virtually, representing BMO Harris Bank as the presenting sponsor for the 2020 Women United Breakfast. I was thrilled when I was asked to say a few words of welcome as United Way and Women United are near and dear to me. I've had the great opportunity throughout my career at BMO to volunteer for both United Way and Women United. One of the things I'm most proud of working for BMO is our dedication, our commitment, and our focus to diversity and inclusion in our workforce. One of the areas of focus has been the career advancement and development of women without limitation and without barrier. I was fortunate enough early on in my career to be loaned out to United Way of Dane County as a loaned executive. And that was just a life-changing experience for me. It opened my eyes to the needs of the community and to the great importance of United Way of Dane County. I have been a supporter financially and through volunteering ever since. I had the opportunity to lead Women United in 2014 as chair of the council, and then later served leading the volunteer and membership committee. This morning, you're going to hear about the programs Women United supports really focusing on academic success of our at-risk children. In today's environment with a global pandemic and virtual learning environment, it's now critically important, even more so than in the past, that we support these children as best we can in their learning environments. So I thank you very much for being here, for attending the breakfast, for supporting Women United, and for honoring the 2020 Women in Philanthropy Award recipient, Fabiola Hamden. Congratulations to you, Fatty. Thank you again, BMO Harris Bank, and thanks to Murphy Desmond, Godfrey Kahn, and all the other wonderful sponsors you see here listed and in the program. As you know, Women United has always had a special focus on quality education experiences. Women United formed in 2004 when a small group of women in our community took action to help close the opportunity gap and support Schools of Hope Tutoring Initiative. They recognized the critical role that community support can and must have in early literacy. What started out as a group of 20 dedicated and generous women, some of whom are here today joining us, has now grown into a powerful network of almost 1,000 women. We are also part of a global force of 70,000 women from more than 165 communities across the world. Just as we work to change lives here in Dane County, 
we know Women United members across the world are igniting change in their local communities. It's a powerful thing when passionate and committed women join together. Locally, Women United has celebrated the empowerment of women while furthering our mission to create positive change through philanthropy, service, and professional development. Thank you to our current Women United volunteers who help lead this effort. Women United fights for education for every child in Dane County. We do this through investing in and advocating for programs that reduce educational disparities and ensure students' success academically. To share what we can do virtually today, please give a warm welcome to our MC for today's program, Jeffrey Sandler. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're just absolutely thrilled to, uh, to host this event. Uh, uh, my name is Jeffrey Sandler, uh, and thank you so much for being here. Uh, as Annie mentioned, everybody, we are here this morning to learn about the challenges that our students are facing, uh, and more importantly, what we can do, and you can definitely help. The first thing that you can do is to support education during this event this morning uh, and make a gift. If you can make a gift, that would be fantastic. Each year, the Women United Breakfast is a fundraiser to support education initiatives. And in just the last three years, this event has raised more than $120,000. Our goal this year is to raise 45,000 and we need your help to do that. All the proceeds will go to the greatest needs for our students, uh, making sure that they can succeed academically during this uncertain and constantly changing time. All right, everybody, let's see where we're at. Let's see that thermometer. Ooh. Oh yeah, we are just over $20,000, fantastic. Thank you so much to all of these generous sponsors that you see scrolling on the screen uh, who had made, uh, made the gift when you registered. So thank you, thank you. I have some great news as well, everyone. BMO Harris Bank uh, will match dollar for dollar uh, all the gifts made up to $10,000. So we've already spent $10,000 of their money. So thank you so much to BMO Harris. Uh, now you know what to do. Uh, you're going to see in the chat, you're going to see on their screen right now how you can give if you haven't given yet or if you even if you have and you can uh, give a little bit more. Uh, here's the instructions. First, uh, if you have the virtual program open, all you have to do is click make a gift button on your uh, and and give on your credit card or you can get, grab your phone and you can text the word breakfast to 40403. And again, all of this information is up on the screen. Once you get, once you send that text, you'll receive a response back with a link. And you just click on that link and uh, put in your credit card and make your gift. All right, let's all take a moment to get out our phones, everybody. Put your eggs and your uh, and danishes and your coffee off to the side. Grab your phone, uh, open up the virtual program, or give that text to give. Uh, I do have my phone. I've opened up my message app and I am typing in the phone number 40403 and I'm texting the word breakfast to that number. And oh, I just received the link. I'm gonna open it and it's ready for me to give my gift. All right, and once you've given your gift, everyone, let's share it on social. Let's post on social media. Uh, if something you've learned today is especially meaningful to you, please share that with your friends and followers and encourage them to join you as well. All right, we've made it really easy to do. If you click on the Facebook or Twitter icons in the upper corner of the virtual program that you have, it will pop open a new post for you. Uh, and if social isn't your thing, well, then you can just uh, send some carrier pigeons or, uh, or send an email to somebody, however it works for you to get the word out. Uh, that uh, United Way is uh, in need of your support today. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, now we're going to celebrate this year's Women United Philanthropy Award recipient. Along with the award, uh, Fabiola will also receive a pendant from Goodman's Jewelers. Thank you, John, uh, from Goodman's Jewelers. I'll turn it over to Renee now so we can learn more about this year's recipient. Please welcome President and CEO of United Way of Dane County, Renee Moe. 
Thank you, Jeffrey. Wow, fantastic introduction of how we are doing today's event. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It is so good to see you. It is so great to be in here with the studio folks and to everybody who's joined us virtually. Thank you, thank you. It is really an honor to all be together, united in these extraordinary times. With a pandemic in really impacting our community's health, an economic crisis affecting family stability, and our continued fight against racial disparities that we see in all areas of life, we are here today to talk about those disparities and opportunities in education. We know that coming together in support of education is more important than ever. We know that education is one of the fundamental pieces to breaking the cycle of generational poverty. And we also know that we have a historic and systemic issue that creates barriers to our success for our students and that all of us who have the opportunity to recognize and take steps to improve our policies and our institutions that will allow us to come together to help provide those opportunities to all students and to set them up for success in life. Individuals who graduate from high school have higher earning potential. They contribute more to the local economy and they're more likely to raise kids who graduate on time. Thank you for choosing to be here this morning to learn and to think differently about how we individually and collectively united can help in this moment. United Way is led by volunteers, as you know, and I wanna take this time to thank our Women United Council. Annie Thyme, our rock star who is leading the council this year, you can see from her delivery this morning, her calm, her warmth, her professionalism. We are just so grateful to have you leading in this extraordinary year. With all the challenges 2020 has thrown at us, you continue to be nimble, innovative, and forward moving. And I can't thank you and your council enough. I've also got to do a shout out to our friend Jill Whipley, who has been tweeting and social mediaing up a storm. So thank you, Jill, <laughs> our vice chair, who has been able to help get the word out. And it takes a bit of bravery to be able to say publicly what you believe and to encourage others to join in. And we're so grateful to everybody who's been doing that this year. I wanna also thank Annie's company, American Printing, for providing the beautiful design this year and those programs that so many of you received in the mail. We're really grateful to do all of that promotion and to have the competent skills and partnership of your company as well. This is the eighth year of our award and we're so thrilled to be joined virtually with many of our past winners today. Joining these phenomenal women is Fabiola Hamden, one of our biggest champions for change, who has been investing in families and helping our children throughout her entire life and career. Fabiola is a senior social worker with the Dane County Department of Human Services, and that she's the first immigration affairs supervisor in the county. She's a groundbreaker, a pioneer. For almost 20 years, she has brought her expertise and passion to her work with the United Way, focusing on a holistic approach on families and zooming in on education. She's a member of the United Way's Board of Directors and a leader on our Vision Council. That is the group who frames issues, helps us to mobilize resources through the investment process and make sure we are accountable for results. She has previously chaired the Education Community Solutions Team and she led both of our Quentime projects to talk about and learn about Latino life in Dane County. And she's done this and so much more. Fabiola provides outreach and resources to immigrants and refugee community members in, our, in Dane County, meeting long-term and immediate needs. She's also one of the founders of El Dia de los Niños, an annual event to increase awareness about child safety and parenting. And she's a member of the Latino Children and Families Council. She does these and so much more because every day she serves. Wherever she can find a way to help, she does. She's one of those folks that inspires us to do more through giving, through advocating, through volunteering. Please read her full bio for all the ways her leadership and advocacy have made a lasting impact in our community. One of the consistent things about Fabi is that she is always there. She is present, she is on call, she is always willing to help bring the community together and to help families in our community. She understands that group, family, is so critically important to making sure our neighborhoods, schools, workplaces, and our society are strong. When I was brand new in my role, I was able to call on Fabi anytime. She's always been very candid about what the needs are in our community. She makes sure the voices of our Latinx families are right there in the board meetings with us, right there in the boardroom as decisions are getting made so that all of our families are represented in all of our changes that we're working to make together, positive change together. 
As an immigrant herself, Fabi has the unique lived experience required to truly understand the challenges these families are facing in our community, and we value her input, we value her service, we value her brilliance immensely. Before we hear from Fabiola, her husband, Imad, has a message to share. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my extreme pleasure and honor to introduce to you today the love of my life and the person that made my life whole for the last 26 years. Fabiola Hamdan is one of a kind. She is intelligent, kind, modest, determined, generous, helpful, has a big heart, clear in everything she does. She's a great mom, a beautiful person in and out, and much more. As an immigrant that came to this country with very little resources, she worked very hard to become one of the pillars of our community in her pursuit of social justice and fairness to the people. Fabi spends countless hours every day to help people in need. She volunteers whenever she can and lends a helping hand without hesitation. Her work through the years has been recognized by people and families in need in this community. Many times when we are in public, we are approached by appreciative and grateful people. She has significant impact on their lives. People who are happy and have hope in achieving their dreams and needs. That's it. Fabiola has been recognized by many others that observed her and what she represents. And I would like to mention a few. Fabiola was the Wisconsin Magazine Woman of the Year, the Business Forum Athena Award, United Way Volunteer Award, the McDowell Alumni Achievement Award, Award, MATC Community Councils of Color, YWCA Woman of Distinction, Most Powerful Latinos in Wisconsin, National Association of Social Workers Distinguished Service Award, and if you want, I can keep going for the next half hour. If you ask Fabiola what her biggest accomplishment is, she will tell you it's our children. In her own words, my children are my life. Again, I'm proud to present Fabiola Hamden, a woman like no other. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, uh, Renee, Annie, everybody here. And um, to our distinguished audience, good morning. A nuestra distinguida audiencia, tengan ustedes muy buenos días. I would like to thank uh, United Way, its staff, volunteers, and the Women United members for hosting this wonderful event and for this great honor. I would also like to thank all of you waking up so early to be part of this event con and contribute your time for a good cause. Last but not least, I would also like to thank my dear husband and children, my family, my Dane County colleagues and friends who are here virtually with me today. Their support, love, encouragement means the world to me. I am humbled to receive this prestigious recognition Women United Philanthropy Award. Core of the definition of a philanthropy is promoting the welfare of others, which are central part of my professional life and my volunteerism. All of you today are philanthropists because you are engaged in making our community a better place by advocating for equity, quality, education of our children, especially during these unprecedented times. We all are witnessing the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on our most vulnerable community members. I arrived to this country 35 years ago, uncertain of my future, not speaking English, facing the challenges of all new immigrants. On top of that, my mom was undergoing a very difficult brain tumor surgery. As a family, we lived through her painful recovery from surgery and radiation, the constant ER visits, fearing for the worst. Things turned around and she, she recovered. She is now at home watching me and I am so thrilled to share this day with her. Te quiero mucho, mam. 
I was able to overcome many barriers and obtain a master's degree in social work so I could help and advocate for families in need. I am very fortunate to have the job I have because it gives me an, the opportunity to meet people whose lives are very vulnerable and sometimes full of sorrow and sadness. Day by day, they entrust me with their personal stories, their fears, and their dreams. Hardworking people, many of them immigrants, whose dreams are our dreams. I encourage ch children and youth to advance in their educational goals. I challenge them to acquire skills to, uh, to improve their lives. But as you all know, it is very hard to do, to do it alone. Now, more than ever, the struggles and challenges are even graded with virtual learning. Many parents do not, cannot help their children at home. Many parents do not speak English. Many parents cannot provide their children with good technology such as high speed internet, iPads, etc. Many of these families are totally isolated. That is why it is imperative for us to be there for them as their village by connecting with agencies like United Way and Women United, whose volunteers are committed to fight for the education of every child in the county. These amazing individuals invest their time and effort to educate for uh, um, quality, equity, educational experiences from early childhood through all high school. Thank you again for this honor. I am really, really um, happy. Well, I must say, we can no longer allow our students to not fulfill their dreams for a good education. We can no longer allow families to be torn apart. We can no longer allow our people to live in shadows. We cannot uh, longer afford to be silent. We need to fulfill the dream of Dr. King, a dream of justice and equity. We need to step in and commit ourselves to make difference, to make a difference by volunteering and helping our students to achieve their full potential today more than ever. There is a part of me that will forever stay in Bolivia, my home country, but my new country, the United States, has given me so many opportunities, joy, and happiness. Here, I graduate from a top 10 university. I found the love of my life. I have two beautiful sons, found wonderful friends that are my family, and found a fulfilling job that helps me fight for social justice. All of this would have not been possible without the help of caring teachers, neighbors, professors, without educational opportunities, without the love and, and unconditional support of my family, my friends, and my dear community. In closing, I would like to leave you with these wise words from our beloved Justice Gimberg. She said, if you want to be a true professional, you will do something outside of yourself something to repair tears in our community, something to make life a little better for people less fortunate than you. That is what I think a meaningful life is, living not for yourself, but for one's community. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for this great honor, and thank you for supporting our children in their education. Muchisimas gracias. Oh my gosh, the crowd is going wild. Fabi, thank you so much. Congratulations. We are so happy for you. Uh, I know all of you uh, out in virtual world are just uh, smiling uh, and clapping and applauding uh, Fabiola for this award. She is so deserving. Thank you so much for being here and, uh, and much deserved, I have to say. Uh, before we move on, everybody, to the uh, panel discussion that we have this morning, let's take a look at our thermometer and see how much we're raising to support education. Hey, 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 $31,000. We are getting there. We're close. Uh, but there's still some more work to do. Uh, remember that one-to-one uh, -one match from BMO Harris. Thank you so much to BMO Harris Bank for, uh, for donating that $10,000. Uh, remember, our goal is $45,000 
by the end of the morning. So keep on giving as much as you can. A few examples of what your generosity can make possible. School and art supplies for children uh, participating in programs at community centers and youth centers. English, Spanish, and bilingual books and resources to support early education. Tutoring and homework assistance for our students. And thank you so much, everybody, for your generous gifts. They have a measurable impact on our neighbors. If you haven't uh, been able to give your gift yet, now's the time. Please do that. There's still plenty of time, and now is the best time to do it. All right, back to you, Renee. Thank you so much, Jeffrey, and what a remarkable result so far. Thank you all. What an amazing response. And Fabi, my eyes are still wet. Congratulations, and um, your story and your heartfelt love for our community is just so inspiring, and it's just such an honor to be able to recognize you today. So thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Um, I know there's a huge Fabi squad out there watching. So to all of you, hello. And I know that you're cheering and shouting from home as well. So, um, and hi, Fabi's mom. I love that, that you're watching. So for 98 years, United Way and our partners have been addressing our community's toughest challenges and working to stabilize local families. We know there are so many issues that are put into place. People start in different places, they're put in different places, and our focus on addressing systemic barriers to help people access the building blocks of well-being, a quality education, a family supporting job that includes the ability to pay for housing and health supports. In 2020, our goal of providing pathways to stability remains the same, but how we do the work is necessarily evolving. Let's talk about Devin. He's a student in our local family. Right now, he's learning virtually, adapting to a new schedule, struggling with the myriad of technologies he's got to be working with, and his caregivers and teachers are engaging with him very differently from what they typically had. Right now, he is able to get food from school on a few days, but sometimes he's hungry. He doesn't have school supplies at home as robustly as he would in a school building, and he misses his friends and extended family after months of being away from them. He doesn't have the myriad of adults down the hallway saying, hello, how are you? I'm glad to see you today. One of the things that we know for our kids is uh, that we've got to be there for them, right? We have so many opportunities as a community to come together to invest in our children, in our families, to make sure that we're able to help everybody succeed and have a great chance, an equitable chance to be able to graduate and go on to life, college, career, and life ready. It's a tough time, and we're more committed than ever to providing holistic supports. So I've got a fourth grader this year and a, a sixth grader, so brand new middle school student. And let me tell you, virtual learning is not easy for a family who understands the ins and outs of what it takes to work from home and do virtual learning. Every one of us who's got that situation going on right now is feeling some level of stress. And stress in the home is really what's creating even more disjointedness for our families, in addition to all those things I mentioned for Devin. And right now, we know that, again, we're going to get through this together. We're going to get through this stronger. We're going to use this moment in time to innovate and to make sure that we are doing what we need to do to make sure that every kid is successful going forward. And this is a chance for us to reflect and teach and think differently about how we reach every student where they're at. We're committed to providing those holistic supports for the whole child and in the rest of the agenda for change for the whole family, doing everything we can to ensure that our children are mentally socially and academically healthy. Collaboration is a key component of this work and a core United Way strength. We have been so proud to work alongside our school districts, nonprofits and corporate partners and governmental representatives to raise funds for childcare, get school supplies to the kids who need them and reimagining tutoring in a virtual world. Our community's generous response to the Dane County COVID-19 Emergency and Recovery Fund earlier this year also allowed us to provide immediate funding to support increased needs for access to food, rent and utility assistance, employment resources, mental health concerns, and much more. With our support, a Madison West High Area Collaborative was able to assist families struggling with housing and rent who were unable to find assistance in other places. And when a mother called 211 for help in feeding her children while she was waiting for her unemployment benefits to kick in, the staff at Bayview Foundation were able to give her a gift card to purchase food the relief in her voice was so much thanks. These are just some of the heartwarming stories coming out of our community in this time of need. And we're so glad to be a part of the solution with the help of our many competent, capable partners. While meeting the needs of today, we continue to look ahead and plan for the future. 
that long-term work of systems changing and coming together, looking at the family as a whole unit to gen and coordinating care, that's really an Ida Way sweet spot. Framing issues, mobilizing resources, being accountable for the results, being accountable for making change with every dollar you give. The Schools of Hope Delegation Team 2.0 has been meeting this year to update their strategic vision for literacy tutoring for elementary students all across Dane County. I saw our friend Dana, who's the superintendent of Middleton Cross Plains on today. Hi, Dana. Thank you for your leadership, as well as our chairs, Dr. Gloria Ladson-Billing, nationally recognized for her cur curriculum expertise. She is a teacher of teacher and understands the opportunity gap in education like no one else. And also the president and incoming CEO of American Family Insurance, Bill Westrait, both of them leading our team to have numbers of important conversations this year that are going to transform schools of hope for the future for these uncertain times and beyond. We know that our current efforts aren't enough for every child and now is the time to make sure that going forward every student graduates and is prepared for higher education career and community. I can't say that enough. We have got to set our expectations high. We've got to believe that we can reach in Meet every child where he or she is at, where he, she, or they are at, and make sure that we can advance together. The academic opportunity gap begins so early. We know that in the first year of life, reading to and having conversations with young children helps develop critical thinking skills, helps develop those pre-literacy skills, those social skills. And we know that when you have young babies, we need to be able to engage those brain synapses as their, their neurons are developing, as those synapses are connecting and firing. Um, they don't get another chance to do that until they're a little later in life. We've got to take advantage of those first 1,000 days. Felicia, who is set to start kindergarten next year, she's at risk of falling two years behind her peers by the time she turns five. We know that kids from middle-income families are read to approximately 1,000 hours by the time they start kindergarten. But with her mom working two jobs and a lot of change and stress happening in the household, we, we know the evolution right now adapting to COVID area changes. She maybe only gets read to about 25 hours before school. That is not to blame the parents. That is not to blame the other circumstances, but just to say our community has an opportunity to zoom in and help support that family to make sure she's ready. Additionally, we know that graduation can be predicted as early as the end of third grade. That's the age at which a child transitions from learning how to read to read to learn. Children from lower income families have been shown to lose more than two months of learning over the summer. We call this the summer slide. And we know right now there's a COVID slide. That puts kids in catch up mode. It puts teachers in very diverse rooms with kids at all different reading levels. And we know that you can lose years over the cumulative effect of those slides, putting uh, peers behind, uh, years behind in middle school. The six year graduation rates for African American and Latinx students in Dane County We've moved them from the mid 60s and 70s up to 87% in recent years. That's compared to 94% for white students. While we're seeing successes, it's still not enough. We know that 87% of our kids graduating, even 94%, we want all of our kids being able to graduate. What does it take for us as a community to step in, lead in, and support and invest to make sure our kids are doing that? The difference in high school graduation contributes to the magnitude of our racial opportunity gaps in employment and so many other indicators that we care so deeply about. And this is about our community's health and well-being, what we do together to make sure we rise together, united, to make sure that every person in our community can succeed in school, work, and life. This is why we're here today. Education is one of those key building blocks. We know a stable life, a quality education for our kids benefits the whole community for generations. With that in mind, I'd like to welcome our panelists and share the challenges we're facing in education this year, what we're doing, and how you can help. Joining us today, Erin Arango Escalante. She's the administrator for the Division of Early Care and Education from the Wisconsin Department of Children and Families. Dr. Carlton Jenkins, our newest superintendent of schools in Dane County from the Madison Metropolitan School District is also my newest boss, the newest member of the United Way of Dane County Board of Directors. Karen Menendez Collar is the executive director of Centro Hispano. She is a longtime partner of United Way of Dane County and a dear friend. And Ginger Zimmerman, president of Murphy Desmond and currently on our campaign cabinet. Ginger is one of our co-chairs of next year's community campaign. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We know this year has been difficult all around, but especially for our kids. 
the impact of racial disparities and poverty and education isn't new. And with the pandemic, we are seeing those disparities rise, we're seeing them unveiled, and we know there are even more obstacles to overcome. Ginger, how are these issues impacting our business community? And what role can business leaders and companies play in supporting students and families right now? Good morning. And before I start, I'd like to congratulate Fabiola as well. Yeah. Um, you're an amazing uh, community leader and advocate. Obviously, the COVID has, has impacted um, every aspect. And, and as you said before, Brene, we've been working on some of these issues with education, closing the achievement gap, making progress, and then all of a sudden, COVID happens and we have to rethink. And that's the same thing with business. Business has had to rethink how we do things. We have companies that aren't going to be open for the rest of this year. We have employees who are working remotely from home. And now as we go into this challenge and continued challenge of educating our young people, we have young people who will be studying online and learning from home. And that creates a different kind of tension for business and for its, its staff, for its employees. We have working parents who have a new stress or, or maybe it's just an amped up stress that now they have to have their attention focused hour to hour during a day, perhaps, supervising children and making sure that they are doing what they're supposed to be doing with their online classes, as well as worrying about whether they are fulfilling their obligations to their employer. And so from that standpoint, we're in a new, new, um, new way of doing things, but we have to look at it in a different way. We have to be flexible. We have to listen to what the, the concerns are because this stress level is different. It's, it's very different than what we've experienced before among our staff. So maybe we, we talk, we listen, we find out what can help them in terms of addressing both of those needs. Because they don't have to be things that are fighting one another. We can work to try to make things work for both. And in that sense, relieve some of that stress and help them help their families. Because that's what really is driving some of the concern with, with um, their ability. And, you know, I'm not sure whether you want me to go into at this point, some of the things that we've, we've heard or seen through our clients. Would you want me to do that? Okay. Um, both Murphy Desmond and through our clients, I've noticed um, people trying to make those efforts to make it easier for people to do both things. So for example, I'm in the professional services industry as an attorney. It's probably a little easier for me to work with my staff, attorneys, paralegals, and, and staff members have for years worked after their children went to bed, worked before they got up in the morning. If you're in manufacturing, you probably can't go make the widget or whatever it is you're, you're manufacturing. It's a little different and, much, and harder to do that. But in my sector and in, in some of those of my clients, we're seeing a change in how we approach things. Instead of having one assistant assigned to me, perhaps it's a pool. So that if one person has to leave the, the, the work time for a period of time to assist their children, someone else can pick up whatever it is that you need to have done. So it's a pool trying to coordinate the hours that each has to give. We also are looking at flexible hours. We have uh, some branches in one particular branch. We have closed the office to visitors. We have one attorney who's there every day who is staffed by an adult family member who has a child who is doing online classes. And that child comes into the office, uses a spare office or the conference room, mom is able to work and also supervise uh, her child. Those are things that traditionally we wouldn't think about, but now we have to do things that make it easier for people to not only get the job done, but focus on their families, because that's very important right now, not just on the educational standpoint, but overall the safety and, and uh, protection of their families. Those are just a few things. Um, I think we are in different times. Business recognizes that. Um, we attempt to cross sectors, share ideas, um, but I think it starts with um, recognizing that the time commitment and focus of our employees, particularly our working families and the stresses they have in trying to meet the educational needs of their children, those things are, are heightened right now and we have to be more focused and more in tune with those concerns and try to address them. And I have heard from so many business leaders right now that attention that Ginger was talking about to making sure that their employees are supported, their whole families are supported. And I think this, uh, this new awareness and awakening of you know, this shared experience that we're all going through 
um, feels like it's going to be able to continue into the future for our families. So thank you, Ginger, for leading the way and providing those great examples. Erin, can you share some examples of successful partnerships that address the challenges? Good morning and congratulations, Fabiola. Uh, it was so it was so exciting to hear you talk um, this morning. And so I just wanted to say thank you for all that you do for our community. Um, I, Renee, I just want to start by saying I think you set up our, our problem that we're addressing really well. And I really think that Fabiola, in, in, in sharing, um, she mentioned doing work to fulfill the dream of, of justice and equity was really key. Um, and so to start, I just want to say um, a couple of things. Everything that we're talking about is really related to early care and education. And I want to be really intentional about, about saying, talking about the importance of early care and education in that birth through five space. And so when we're talking about kindergarten readiness, when we're talking about, um, you know, K-12 being, being a successful um, community member, et cetera, it all truly begins in that birth through five space in early care and education. So whether we're talking about childcare, whether we're talking about Head Start, home visiting, et cetera, it is all very, very important for our children and families. And as Ginger mentioned, absolutely, things are stressful right now for our children and for our families. And so having an intentional focus on social emotional development, on how we can support our youngest children in that space is really, really key. I'll give two examples of things that are, that are going well. Um, right now, we know um, that there are many school districts who are partnering with their early care and education providers locally to think about supporting both our, um, our, our children who are birth to five, but also those school agers who need a safe and healthy place to be in order to really be able to learn um, virtually. And so that is something that we are seeing. We're seeing that partnership um, between school districts as well as childcare really increase across the state and in Dane County. I also just wanna to mention too, um, that Wisconsin was awarded, and this is for 2020, a $10 million preschool development grant. And Governor Evers and a First Lady Kathy Evers really helped to spearhead this work and the the um, the premise behind this particular grant is connecting the dots among unusual allies and so one thing that we are, are really focusing on is connecting the dots with policy with practice with procedure both at the state level but also at the local level and one example of how this is playing out in dane county um, is really with the 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 playing field which focuses um, on both Head Start as well as child care, as well as the Road Home um, and the Plumbers Union. And that is a great example of connecting the dots with unusual allies to support young children and families who are either experiencing homelessness, who are um, really having, um, who are struggling, just families are struggling in general with the global healthcare pandemic, with social and, and racial injustice, et cetera. So being able to look from both a business perspective, the Plumbers Union who are looking to um, really recruit and retain folks to go into this particular trade, knowing that childcare is a huge issue. So from that perspective, from the road home perspective and making sure that we have safe and, and, and healthy environments for our, our children to really focus on social emotional development and from the playing field who are really connecting the dots to making sure that we are having these, these amazing, um, amazing programs to support children and families. So that's one example at the local level on how we are connecting the dots to really holistically support our, our children and family with an intentional focus on social emotional development. That's one example of many that are happening. And again, I just encourage our, our business communities to really collaborate. We know, we know that recruitment and retention issues for employees um, is often surrounded around childcare, the lack of childcare, the um, affordability of childcare. And if we are going to move the needle around equity and inclusion, I really believe it starts 
with early care and education. And I hope that we continue to look for additional opportunities to collaborate and to intentionally connect the dots in Dean County. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. Connecting the dots is one of our favorite things. So uh, thank you for making that point so uh, convincingly and for sharing that very compelling example. Karen, what are the biggest challenges faced by families and how has this changed during COVID-19? Hi, Renee. Thanks so much for having me. It's so lovely to see you, see everyone. Um, to hear Fabiola speak to me is the perfect start to the day because she has the heart of the community in so many different ways. But I think one thing to also keep in mind is that the issues that we're facing right now since COVID are not necessarily new. Um, so this work is really one where at this time, everybody needs to dig deep um, to mobilize and make sure that we really make headway in terms of moving our young people and our families forward. Um, I, what really stuck with me in Fabi's words is when she said, you know, one of our purposes is to uh, wipe the tears in our community. There's significant amount of trauma that's carried by communities of color and has been for a very long time. The fears that she spoke about are real. You know, personally, I can attest to with the Latino community, our dreams are real. And we wanna make sure that we are college, career, and community ready. So, you know, in my mind, organizations like Centro in partnership with the United Way, our role is really to make sure that all those uh, burdens that our families are carrying, especially heavily now, that they're uplifted, that we're all carrying our weight and, and doing our part. We're working with families and young people that have been struggling for a while with mental health issues, with systems that perhaps don't really have that bi bicultural, bilingual capability to support them in the way that they need to. With deep immigration traumas, it takes a lot to move to a completely different country and start your life over. But I think most pressing right now with COVID, what has stood out to me is you know, the digital divide and how our school districts are working so hard to meet that gap because they recognize it. And I'm really excited that Dr. Jenkins is here. I have to tell you that. Um, but also basic needs. Housing is huge right now. Financial needs are significant. So many in our community are in essential workers working in sectors that have been hit so very hard right now during this pandemic. And I think for me, I'm always eager to innovate. I'm always eager to figure out how do we connect the dots. And that's why I'm, I'm always so excited and, and just inspired to be a partner with United Way, because I think together um, with the help of community and everybody working, we can, we can change things and we can innovate and we can do things better. So um, I can't tell you um, how much is being carried right now, but is incredibly important. One thing to keep in mind, I think all the work that we do in the schools is significant to make sure that our kids thrive after the fact. About 30% of Latino kids are actually successful in post-secondary education, graduating from a four-year degree. So all the seeds that we're planting now in education and how we do them and how we support our kids are really significant for their future and beyond. So thank you, Renee. Karen. Um, you know, the reality of what you just said really strikes me in that we've been doing this work for a very long time and the pandemic really lifts up all of our eyes to be able to see and hopefully inspires us to do that innovation, to dig deep, to make sure that we're changing those inequitable systems for the long term. Dr. Jenkins, welcome again to our community. We're so grateful to have your leadership right here and welcome back home. How is MMSD working to minimize academic slide in this year? Oh, you're on mute. Okay, how about now? Perfect, we hear you loudly okay. and clearly. Okay, great. Hey, first of all, let me just say uh, to Fabiola, just wonderful, and I mean, she just took me directly back to Dr. King. Anyone can be great because anyone can serve, correct? and not having a college degree, a subject and verb degree, but what she really resonated with me, and I think this whole event is about, here she is, is a person uh, with, you know, a heart of grace, right, that's generated by love, and you can just hear it in her speech and just, you know, the things that she's being recognized for today. This is where we are right now. We need more heroes, sheroes like Fabiola, 
And I think United Way has a long history of stepping up in the community. And I want to say, say also to the panelists and what they've said, they were all spot on. And it resonates with what we're trying to do in MMSD because during these particular times, it's not just about academics. We have to re realize that this is a medical situation that's causing enormous stress, enormous contributing to the mental health conditions that we're seeing throughout our country and throughout the world. I think this is a time where we're having to take education uh, in MMSD and in other places across the country and around the world and say, hey, what's going on here with our children first, socio-emotionally, addressing the mental health, and then how can we continue to provide a high quality education that addresses the real needs of our students? And quite frankly, this COVID uh, has only illuminated some of the, the disparities that we've known that have been there since the beginning of our education systems and that we have not truly, truly addressed. Beginning with Brown versus the Board of Education when we did our integration, we understood then and we understand now that we still needed to address some of the things within our educational system. So as a result, here we are in MMSD, started last spring and going out and meeting the first needs of our families and trying to help provide technology to all those who did not have it, provided hot spots to those who did not have it, our staff volunteered this summer, uh, taking food out, the, the essentials of what we're talking about, because you can't learn if you don't feel safe, bottom line. But our staff came in this summer and worked to try to adjust what we had done during the spring when we went into a crisis learning mode, taking what we had been doing traditionally, which did, which did not work for all students in the first place. This has given us a big opportunity, if you ask me, to say, how do we go deeper? How do we make sure that we really now and truly, uh, truly educate all of our children? But we're very concerned right now that those students who have been marginalized, even during these times that we can't reach fully, we need the entire community. So when Aaron talked about the connecting, uh, when the other speakers talked about the connecting, we need to connect more now than ever. When we look at our strategic framework and we talk about goal one, about not only having our children ready for college and careers, but for the community, how visionary, now is the time to look at community, but it's a reciprocal accountability. It's from the school side and it's from the community side. What do we need to do? So we're trying to establish these partnerships. Erin, uh, and I continue to say your name because you were just hitting every spot. I say, wow, she needs to send me a speech. But when she talked about the early, uh, early literacy, early childhood, we're talking about birth before we need to talk about prenatal care within our community, how that's going to impact and prepare our children for what they're gonna need in the future. And yes, early literacy, if anyone's ever had an opportunity to hear me speak, you hear me talking about early literacy and I am really trying to push that we have a, a community conversation around what's the science of reading. That's one of the levers that we all know if we can get our children to read and read early and read well, it can be transformative. They can not only graduate ready for college, ready for careers, but our community at a whole nother on a whole nother level. They can participate in our society. And I think when you look at Fabiola coming in, she, as an immigrant, going graduating from a top 10 uh, university, she's a shining example. So when we're in our conversations and we're talking about what can't happen, I say, stop it. Let's talk about what can happen. Right now, we can come together, we can figure out this childcare piece, we can figure out the safety pieces together. Now we don't have a vaccine yet, um, and so we have to take every extra precaution that we can to make sure that not only our students, but our staff and our community, all of us are safe. So in MMSD, what we're doing is trying to make sure that our lessons that we've come back and the instructional models that we've developed, that they do too have more rigor than what we had last spring. But at the same time, there's a balance in taking into account what's appropriate in terms of the students. We're hearing back, a lot of parents are very excited about what's going on. But at the same time, we're also hearing, have we balanced what we needed to do for our earliest year learners? We're talking about our kindergartners. This is their first year in school. Have we necessarily created the best experience? We think we have a refined experience, but we're continuing to listen to our students, listen to our parents, listen to everyone because everyone's being impacted by this. And I think earlier, as I heard one of the speakers say too, I think it was uh, uh, one of the earlier speakers mentioned about the families and how they're impacted. I am hereby deputizing every parent right now as an official virtual learning teacher. 
because you are going through it as well. And the stress that our staff feeling, you're feeling it at home. And we're having to try to balance that at MMSD to not traditionally go forward because it's good for us. No, education needs to be transformed and this is the time to do it. But this time what I'm saying, when we come out of the pandemic, let's come out of it together with everyone uh, achieving at high levels. You dropped our data when you talk about 60 some percent versus 90 some percent succeeding. First of all, we want 100% of our children to succeed. But the former system historically did not do well by black and brown children, children who have special needs, children who are poor, children uh, come to us with their own rich language. We often refer to as a deficit, but not necessarily. We just need to transform the way that we're doing education all together. And I think this is the opportunity during this pandemic, because if it's done nothing else, it's also helped highlight what we're going through with the racial trauma that's going on in our community. The disparities are overwhelming in terms of who's harmed the most in this. And this is causing another level of stress and really didn't cause another pandemic. The racial trend pandemic has been around a long time. We just haven't talked about it as openly as we're doing right now. So for us in MMSD, I think this is a wonderful opportunity. I think we're gonna to continue to work hard and we encourage the community to continue to give us feedback and we encourage United Way and our other partners to lean in hard. Expect from us as we expect from you. Reciprocal accountability for all people mean all people. So that's where we are right now. And uh, I definitely have some other things, but I'll just stop because I know we don't have much time. I am fired up though right now during this time. Ooh, Concerned. Yeah, and, and, but I will say this too, what I'm hearing from the parents that I want the community to know, we have some children hurting in some big ways. Mm -hmm. Sexual abuse is serious. When we're in school, we're, it's easier for us to detect. Right now, we have some children not in school and we can't get the information from them like we typically do. So we also ask the community to be very thoughtful. If you know anything, please let's report it, uh, not only to the schools, but to the county as well. And we ask the community to just jump in and be a part of this because this is a tough time. We know for a lot, but we can lean in together and bring the human decency back to our society like we should have had. We lost our way to be very frank before COVID. I think COVID has illuminated now that we do need one another to move forward. And if that's not the power of many working for all, I don't know what is. That was beautifully stated, Dr. Jenkins. So I'm going to ask the final question and would ask that you also be succinct uh, so we can stay on time. What is keeping you up at night and how can our community respond? Dr. Jenkins, I'll start with you. Just not knowing which children we're not reaching. That's, that's very bothersome. I know that there are some out there and are we working smart enough intentional enough and collaborative enough to get to the child out there that need us the most. Thank you. And what can our community do to help? Um, again, lean in. We're inviting, we're trying to be in the community. We need honest dialogue, enough of the surface conversation. That's not helping the little kids out there who need us. We need community to say, hey, if you know a kid's not being engaging, uh, with the virtual learning, please tell us. If you know this, tell us. We need the community right now to jump in like they've never jumped in before. And if something we're doing not working, please share it with us. And our staff, they're listening. We have a wonderful staff, a caring staff, and they really are listening. We can help and you can help us. Uh, reciprocal accountability, I think that's what we need from the community. Beautiful, thank you. Ginger, what's keeping you up at night and how can our community respond? What keeps me up at night is really um, whether I'm keeping the members of my firm and their families safe. And not just from, from COVID, but also uh, what Dr. Jenkins talked about before and, and some of the other panelists in terms of uh, mental health isolation, because as we, when you're in an office together, you can read one another just like you can read the situation in a school. And, and so it's that connecting um, that, keeps, that keeps me up at night. Is there somebody out there that we're missing that who, who is feeling very isolated, uh, depressed, and we're not reaching them uh, as a member of their work family? And what the community can do to help, I think Dr. Jenkins um, 
plea for us to lean in is appropriate, but also in, in the context of my concern is making sure that we're reaching out to people and attempting to connect and trying to find out listening and trying to find out what their concerns are and, and try then to figure out what we can do to help so that people don't feel so isolated. Thank you, Ginger. Erin, I'll go to you next. Sure. So we are seeing a significant decline in Dane County and beyond on um, parents having access to high quality and affordable childcare. Um, we know on average that childcare teachers make between 10 and $13 an hour, and we know that infant and toddler care is very difficult to find. If we are going to keep our kids safe and healthy um, and focusing on social emotional development and have them ready to enter K-12 education, and if we are going to reopen our economy, we, we need to have a place for children to go that is high quality with high with well qualified staff um, to really focus on those early years um, and so I, I really think what, what keeps me up is the and this is not something new but the, the decline in those high quality experiences um, for young children and so I really think that the the community and we've seen this as a, a little bit of a, of a silver lining within within these times is the community coming together and thinking about how to collaborate, how to blend and braid funding to really support um, our, our youngest learners and what that can look like, both from the public and private partnerships, um, et cetera. It does take an entire community to, to raise our children, and, and we need to be in this together. And so I think this is actually, it's raised, a t um, it's really the opportunity right now, and it's raised that intentional focus on, on supporting our, our young children. Thank you, Erin. And Karen, what keeps you up at night? Um, thanks, Renee. You know, I think um, as one of my staff members reminded me, more than ever right now, education is a family business. That means that it's affecting our kids, it's affecting our parents, it's affecting every single relative that is involved. And as resilient and as resourceful and as asset driven as our communities are, it keeps me up at night that our systems haven't been able to catch up fast enough, especially right now with the pressures of, of the pandemic. And I echo Aaron's point. I think public-private partnerships, everybody that's here together with us, thinking creatively, uniting with United Way, other partners in the community so that we can move things forward. I think that's what we need to do. But like Dr. Jenkins said, we need to lean in hard to make it happen in a very fast, transformational, effective manner right now. So. Thank you, Karen. And I think that when you think about all those systems that haven't been able to catch up, so many of them were built in the 50s and 60s. That was a manufacturing economy. That was a time where we'd gone through another period of great disruption, and here we are again. And so this is the time where each and every one of you on this call, each and every one of our panelists today, all of us working together, that's what changes outcomes. That's what changes the experience. That's what changes how we feel in our community and how people feel like they belong and have that high expectation to succeed. So thank you all so much much um, to our panelists. Brilliant as always. It is such an honor to partner with you, to collaborate with you. And, you know, I think that the uh, magic of seeing issues from different lenses is so critically important to our work. We know that people live different problems, so they see different solutions. And when all of us can come together and share what we see, that's where the magic happens. And that's what we mean when we say the power of many working for all. So thanks to each and every one of our panelists. It just means so much that you took the time to be here today to share your expertise, to share your wisdom. And uh, I just you know, thank you again for everything that you do for our community and in your own organizations, because we know we've got to do this together. And with that, I'm gonna turn things over to Jeffrey. Um, thank you all for being a part of the Women United event today and uh, thanks for your generosity and support. It just means so much. It really is amazing. Thank you, Renee. Um, and thank you uh, from me personally to all of the panelists as well. Wow, it was so inspiring and uh, just incredible to listen to. I learned a lot and I'm, I'm very inspired by everything that all of you said, so thank you. All right, as we close our program today, there is still time to make a gift to support the issues discussed by our panelists that we just heard from. We will be checking in on the total in just a couple of minutes, but if you haven't already, uh, click on the link in the chat or text the word breakfast to 40403 to make your gift. All right, everybody, I'd like to now invite Annie uh, back to the other podium. 
<laughs> Thank you, Renee, panelist Jeffrey. This has been a really inspiring morning. I'd also like to say congratulations again to Fabiola. Thank you for making our community stronger and an inspiration to all of us here. It's, we've learned a lot this morning and a lot of the words of connection, support, family, early education. I'm a mom of two young girls and it's really important. It, it's a lot to handle right now. So it's great to hear that there's a lot in the works um, to help and support that. Um, if you're inspired by today's message, I encourage you to get involved with Women United because we are a network of support. Um, support to the women that are involved and support to the programs that help with this. You can visit our website, which is gonna pop up on the chat, and you can go ahead and just click a simple form to join and you'll be connected with us. As a member, you'll join an amazing group of women like Fabiola, Ginger, Monique. Um, we have a, a great group and many more. Um, you'll be invited to events focused on personal and professional development networking and volunteer opportunities, and our weekly casual virtual coffee meetings, which every, um, every week's a different topic, and we've given an opportunity for leadership, and it's, so it's led every week by, by a different woman. It's been great. Um, most importantly, you'll be joining a group of community-minded women that give, advocate, and volunteer to support education for our children. As we close today, I hope you're feeling motivated to support this work. In addition to making a gift, there are two other ways to ignite change. Advocate, share, tell people how important it is for our community to address the issues we heard about this morning. While nonprofit partners are focused on delivering services, your advocacy is an additional way to support their operations and work. So please share what you've learned today with others via social media or that next Zoom meeting that you probably have this afternoon. <laughs> you can also volunteer. United Way posts volunteer opportunities that fill real need in our community through volunteeryourtime.org. Visit the webpage to learn about virtual and in-person opportunities related to education. Thank you again to Celebrations Entertainment and Jeffrey for helping us reimagine this year's breakfast. While we continue the tradition of honoring women in philanthropy and activating our community to support education. Jeffrey, what's the update on the goal this morning? Oh my gosh, okay, well, we're gonna look at the thermometer right now, everybody. Let's check on that thermometer and see where we are. Oh, we still have about $10,000 to go. So you just need, we have about 300 people watching right now. So, you know, if, if all of you just did another, you know, $25, $50, whatever you can do, that would be fantastic. Uh, we're at 34600 We really want to get to 45000 uh, to our goal. I know, I know we can do it. Uh, you have the rest of the morning uh, to, uh, to contribute. Because of all you're doing, we're going to be able to invest so much in Dane County's children. So thank you to everybody who has given. Look at all of those names scrolling on the screen. Remember, everybody, every dollar raised today is going right back into our community to help uh, to give kids a hand up in school and in life. We are going to continue uh, to keep the text and the give number live. So feel free to continue to give using 40403 and the word breakfast uh, for really the next week. We're going to continue this uh, to keep on going, keep on going. Um, we mentioned uh, your next Zoom meeting might be this afternoon. It might be in 20 minutes from now. So really just talk about it. Just talk about what uh, United Way is doing, uh, talk about this event this morning, all of the in inspiring words that you heard uh, from our panelists and, and uh, just talk about it and, and other people will give. So thank you to the Women United Volunteers, our generous sponsors and all of our speakers. Uh, thank you for all, uh, for all of you coming this morning. Over 300 of you uh, have been watching and together we are the power of many working for all. Thank you.